Hey, how's everybody doing? Hey. Omaha. It's good to be back. Right. Well, we are uh, we're excited to be here. Y'all welcome uh, Ben Danaher. Justin Wills. Nothing but 
this old guitar and leave. Well, I've exceeded expectations, spoken wild exaggerations, and I've sank down to the bottom. whole thing's supposed to be uh, the middle of nowhere. Like, I'm playing next to a Bentley dealership with Shane DeLuise <laughs> at the top of me. I don't know which one of y'all won best dressed. I won worst dressed. <laughs> Ate sushi today. Fresh sushi. Yeah, it's a coastal town. <laughs> I got it right out of the river. Well, I did everything I could, but I guess I'm quit. I got tired of singing the same old, same old song. It's the last damn chord and the last damn line I spit. The last damn tune about a woman that done me wrong. And I guess it never made much sense on paper. Every quarter you make is gone for it sees it now. If it was God's intention to make me better, I'd have some more to give than words to rhyme. I just shorted y'all half a verse because I got so distracted by the buffalo wings she just got. <laughs> Everybody always talking about how I'm supposed to do it, cause I love it. Said you know for a well, little work out in the end. That water is cold and I can't keep my head above. It don't make much sense to get out and do it again. I've been spending all my time between lines. The dues are paid if the bills are not in the tunes I play are all I've got. I'm direct to these penniless words of mine. And I guess it never made my sense on paper. Every quarter you make is gone for the rest of the season now. And it is God's intention. Make me better. I'd have some more to give than words to rhyme. If it was God's intention to make me better, oh, I'd have some more to give than words to rhyme. I mean, there's a ladder behind the bar.
Can I get a little, just a hair less of my guitar in my way, if you will? Nate, thank you. Well, it's good to be back in Omaha. It's been a, about a year. Um, got some family here, which is nice to see them out. Thank you for coming. I'm minding my P's and Q's and marrying uh, a girl from a town over, so it's a lot, of, lot on the line tonight. <laughs> First time that I ever had my heart broke I was ten years old with the ace of diamonds in my spoke Mary Susan waved at me from across the road And climbed into the homecoming king's GTO If I'd have known then what I know now I tell myself It's how the world goes round Cause most days you lost But one day you might be found If I'd have known then What I know now At seventeen I had to learn a bit of truth Sometimes what you need the most Just don't need you I have to take down all the posters in her room And watched her drive away from me that afternoon If I'd known then, would I know now? I'd tell myself, it's how the world goes round Cause most days you lost, but one day you might be found if I'd have known then what I know now A ten speed never shines like a Pontiac And once you watch them leave they ain't coming back Love can be a laundry list of cold hard facts You stick around, your love can change just like that If I'd have known then, what I know now I'd tell myself, it's how the world goes round Cause most days you lost but one day you might be found If I'd have known What I know now If I'd have known then What I know now Thank you. Can I get a little more of uh, me, my vocal, please? A little more me, please. <laughs> uh, I'll do this one. This is a song I wrote about, uh, wrote this a long time ago about being on the road, and uh, I love it. You know, we had we had this whole uh, two-year shutdown. I don't know if you're aware of that. But, uh, <laughs> things kind of shut down for a couple of years, and. Uh, I never really took this for granted at all, but um, I definitely don't now and never will again in my life that we get to sit in a room and do this together, you know? And, uh, yeah. and also, uh, just one of my favorite things in the world is sitting on stage with, with two of my friends, two, two great songwriters, and just singing songs. It's just one of the coolest things ever. So, uh, oh, we love you too, Josie. Folk sing and junkie, a 
get high when I can't find my way. I heard Colorado was good of my kind, so maybe I'll go there someday. Well, my rhymes are getting tired, and my illusions are worn. I'm a preacher, nothing to say. Before I could carry away well, Angels and highways and old mountain songs Mandolin plays and tremolo is long Cloudy next morning crawl under the night's parade It's a hell of a ride this wild eyed serenade. Heroes and villains, black and white ramblers, sinners just trying to hide. Movers and shakers who talk too damn loud. And I just want to stop for the Angels and highways and old mountain songs The mandolin plays, the tremolo is long Cloudy next morning, let's crawl under the night's parade It's a hell of a ride, this wild eyed serenade Melodies linger off in the distance, mixed with those words in my head. The phone is still ringing, why won't she answer? It must have been something I said. Angels and highways and old mountain songs, mandolin plays.
we don't all fall apart sometimes. There's glory there waiting, some fool to come and take it. Let your head down a little more. Let it all fall to the floor. And let the whole damn place know your pain. Leave it worse than it was before. Be gone when they hit the door. Young man's gamble is a fool's game. I'd like to lie and tell you it gets better. We don't all fall apart sometimes That there's glory there waiting Some fool to come and take it more You should play the fool every time I'd like to lie and tell you it gets better We don't all fall apart sometimes that there's glory there waiting for some fool to come and take it. Boy, you should play the fool every time. I'd like to lie and tell you it gets better. the sushi belly blues. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have any of you guys stumble in here and not know when there's a show? Or are you just in here buying a Bentley? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we all made the joke about trading our van in for a Bentley. It's not lost. In fact, if we, we decided if we if y'all buy enough t-shirts, we will collectively buy a Bentley. <laughs> yeah. so, I don't know if I have the stock. Yeah, Tonight only we're doubling the prices of all of our merch. <laughs> you guys understand, right? It's for a bit, we. That's for a good cause. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I wrote this song about um, some of the bars in Nashville kind of turning from old dive bars to uh, hipster karaoke joints, which uh, bars are much cringier the place you're sitting right now. Uh, um, a lot of these old roughnecks just wanted to have a PBR in peace and then you have all these hipsters singing Holland Oates songs in their face. <laughs> but um, my buddy Justin, uh, not, not that Justin, different Justin. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> we wrote this about um, these, these guys look like they were auditioning for a part in a movie no one had cast them for. And so we wrote this song about two hipsters falling in love in the East Nashville dive bar. The lights inside this dive don't make anyone look good. I could play that part as well as the next guy. I didn't run through any lines after hello. Clever's never been the card I had to throw. So be my RB, and I'll be your James Dean for one night only. This bar is our silver screen. The stale draft we're drinking isn't quite champagne. In this town after midnight, it's about the closest thing. 
And it's hard to see the sparks through the smoke that fills the air. I know how far you've fallen till you get up from your chair. So be my Audrey. Now be your James Dean. For one night only, this bar is our silver screen. When no sign said Eastside City Light, a Hollywood sign. It's too long to be fools, try to hide from clothes and time. You're still my Audrey, and I'm still your James Dean. For one night only, this bar is our silver screen. For one night only, this bar is our silver screen.
wake up four in the morning a whole new set of scars and rain a picture of you my tears made see through I've got hearty I know what it means I've got hearty I know what it means It's another night alone in this house sure ain't helping My only friend is the wind Won't I drink you here with me if I just had one I've got hearty, I know how it ends. I've got hearty, I know how it ends. Lord, when I cross the line, will your hand be here? This hill I've been in all this time You know my name Lord, is it ever gonna be the same? It's the flame that's long burned away I'm sure there's a good ending to this time I've been spent with a whole lot of pain on my mind. Some beautiful place where the best of us stay. I've got hearty instead of goodbye. It's the flame that's long burned away to lonely road. It's the flame that's long burned away to lonely To, to do a show where we were all in the same round because, one, because I'm the opener and no one usually knows who I am, so this is nice that everybody's forced to listen to my songs, but um, the other reason is because 
these guys usually play faster songs than me and I can just play the sad, slow shit that I normally do. And then it gets picked back up, but Justin ruined that for me on this round. <laughs> with, with his own sad banger. I'm the biggest Ben Danaher fan in the whole world, literally. Yeah. Look at me. <laughs> you haven't met my uncle. <laughs> I'm wrestling. Um, over the course of the, uh, the quarantine, I wrote about 40 songs that I was trying to put together for a new record. And, uh, I, I started getting pretty good at like uh, home recording stuff, and I was building these full demos to them. And, um, I went to a buddy of mine named Sean McConnell's house, who was going to produce my album. Thank you, yeah. I know Sean too, he's good. Um, but, um, you know, all these songs that came in there, I thought I had enough songs, but we quickly realized that um, there were a couple topics me and my therapist had covered that we didn't have songs for yet. So, um, one of the ones that uh, we, we came up with was the topic of imposter syndrome, which is kind of the feeling of, of the entire world probably bound to figure out that you're a fraud or that you shouldn't be doing it. And uh, when you're a singer-songwriter in Nashville, that feeling is so easy to get because anybody parking their cars or waiting their tables probably has a Grammy or, uh, or at least a better songwriter than you. And um, we, uh, we kind of use the metaphor of an actor going to work at a, at a play or a movie every day. And this is what we got. The actor takes his place he knows how to change his face to fit the scene Then he goes home wishing He was like the man up on the screen And he wonders if they know Off the set it's just another show Would anybody stay? Long enough to let the credits roll And all the critics are all living in his head They get louder as he lies awake in bed The only character he's ever turned away Is the one he was always born to play The actor gives a wink to the man above the sink, then goes to work. Maybe you him. The actor gives a wink to the man above the sink, then goes to work. It's one of those days, you know? <laughs> Eat too many chocolates, get a brain fart. And then he goes home wishing. He was like the man up on the screen. You know what? If you stream it or if you uh, get online, all the lyrics are perfect on there. So you can purchase it and get the right ones. And all the critics are all living in his head. They get louder as he lies awake in bed. The only character he's ever done. Is the one he was always born to play. When it's quiet on the set, everybody's left and going home. Maybe the worst thing yet is he's still acting when he's all alone. And all the critics. They're all living in his head. They get louder as he lies awake in bed. The only character he's ever turned away is the one he was always born.
Don't go by that second verse. <laughs> Speaking of actors, uh, I'll do this one. This is a song I got that just got featured in this uh, Showtime show this last week. And uh, it was a debut show uh, called The Man Who Fell to Earth. And uh, I got a song placement in it. And uh, they sent the thing in and they said, you could buy a Bentley now, right? <laughs> What's that? So you got enough money to buy a Bentley now? I'm about to buy a Bentley. As soon as the check clears, I'm yeah, going to yeah. buy a Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> they said, they, they, so if, when, they, when they send you something to be in a show or a movie or whatever, they have to kind of describe the whole plot of everything and the, and the scene it's going to be in. And they have to tell you, you know, and they said, it's this man that came, it's this alien that came down to earth and took human form and has to figure out human ways. And uh, we want to do this song of yours called Calaveras County. I thought, well, of course. Yeah, that's why I wrote it. When I, when I wrote that song, I thought, man, one day they're going to make a movie about an alien that comes down to earth and uh, needs to take human form. And I'm going to write a song just for those guys. Yeah, I'll take my Bentley in uh, red, please. Calaveras County, at least not any that I've 
the actor motif. Yeah. Man, you know, I got, I, I, I got to say, Ben's going to kill me for saying this, but he took video of me earlier with one New Balance on and one Timberland on, so I owe him one. When my manager said, uh, this guy named Ben Danaher got added to the tour with me and Edie, I've known Edie for a little while, I didn't know Ben, and I saw a picture of Ben, I'm like, damn it, man, like, I hate this guy. <laughs> Look how good looking this dude is, and, and I gotta, he's gonna get up on stage before, no, I don't like him, I, I'm not gonna, I, I don't, I can't, I can't have this. And uh, I just gone to Atlantic City, a couple of weeks ago to uh, celebrate my 10 year anniversary with my wife. We just kind of tore off and being the heathens we are, went to like the sin capital of the East. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I put on one of Ben's songs. It was that song he just played for you, the actor. And I was struck. It, it, we were about to go down to the boardwalk and walk up and down and eat some funnel cake. I said, I, hang on, I got to learn this song real quick. This is a beautiful song. And realized immediately that he's as uh, dark and broken as any of us. <laughs> I'm, I'm so incredibly happy to be sharing this stage, of course, with my, with my friend, the master, Jason Eady, but uh, Ben Danaher, what a, what a fantastic writer and human. His, uh, his future in laws here, I don't know if he was so dark and broken, man. Oh, oh yeah, you got family here. Uh, ben is... What was funny was that some, some uh, venue posted a flyer of all three of our press photos and I was the only one smiling. And <laughs> Justin commented, Ben Danner is the only one happy in this photo, which is not true. <laughs> well, here's, here's another actor song. Uh, the, I, I wrote it about being a father. I got identical twin girls. I don't necessarily know what I'm doing other than I got a great dad and so I just try to pattern myself after him. But, I was thinking about how being a parent is kind of like nine-tenths bullshit, like being a musician or an actor, and you know, you always get these guys in this business or any, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is you guys do, I'm sure there's like an old timer when you started, and he's telling you how it is, you don't know, dude, he's full of shit, and so I, I try to, I try to couple my uh, arrogance with humility. Uh, when it comes to being a dad, my, my kids at nine know that I'm full of shit. Uh, this is called Temporary Blue. When I first laid eyes on you, that brand new temporary blue had to move just barely out of you. And then I knew. So picture this, a new fixture on the screen In the next scene I meet the best of me Losing days is the nature of the beast Don't I know I know how it all plays out Whatever plans we made are all thrown out Whatever part we've played is torn apart on the stage we can't sail out. And I can try to write your lines, my new friends, just to watch you throw the whole thing to the wind. I don't know how you go home in the but I know, I know how it all plays out, whatever plans we made are all thrown out, whatever part we've played is torn apart on the stage we can't see it out. Almost looks like a sellout tonight. Tuesday in Nebraska. There be times when the story takes a turn. So new line you never thought to learn. And you end up with a party burn. No I know. I know how it all plays out. Whatever plans we made are all thrown out. Whatever part we've played is torn apart on 
on stage we can't see Pleasure's mine, introduce my two closest friends. So let the closing line find you well till I see you again. Yeah, um, I do have a lot of sad songs, and a lot of them are uh, pre-dating um, Holly, which, sorry in advance for these, but uh, this was the, that was supposed to be funny, and it wasn't. <laughs> um, no, there's a lot, uh, a lot of pressure on this. Uh, here's a really dark one that um, has nothing to do with my relationship. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Sometimes you fall, it feels like flying between what you want and what you know. You know what it's like to the men. It is what it is. You got shades and every color. And I'm a canvas I'm still trying to uncover. You like the rain. And I like the rain. The choices that you make are so damn hard to make. So do you run or hold on tight? Do you fake it when you know that it ain't right? Or do you drag them with you through the ugly? Do you love enough to leave somebody? The easy thing is to stick around It ain't fair to you for me to pull you down And cuts that deal They're gonna hurt But watching your full heart loving half a man Is probably worse So do you run? Oh, hold on tight Do you fake it when you know that it ain't right Or do you drag them with you through the end? Do you love enough to leave somebody You like for I'm like that You can't take back Choices you make So do you run Or hold on tight Do you fake it when you know That it ain't right Or do you all you ever do Is make it money you're gonna shake, shake in uh, 68 beats a minute. <laughs> Do you love enough to leave somebody? It was a time for a minute. <laughs> That's Ruben behind the bar helping you out. All right. Here's a little song about my hometown. I grew 
grew up over in Jackson, Mississippi. Realizing a funny thing, so my wife Courtney is, uh, she, she's got me, uh, she's ridden with me when I'm driving and, and I text a lot when I'm driving and, and I swerve all over the road, so she's made me start doing this voice to text thing. So now I just wanna say sentences like this period and ask if you know what I'm talking about, question mark. <laughs> It's a hard habit to break, you know? Spend all day saying all your uh, punctuations, exclamation point. Jason Eady's got some songs in what my drummer calls uh, that butt-shaking tempo. I like it. <laughs> so I released a record in August 2020, which will go down in history as uh, the worst month to release an album in the history of recorded music. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Happy I did. I don't care if it ever streams another time. Uh, I'm proud of it. I made the thing that I set out to make. It's called the United States. You can find it wherever. But what I did is, is, is kind of the backwards way of writing songs. I wrote the track list and the sequence and I knew what it was supposed to sound like before I wrote any of the songs. I had this idea that 
I wanted to write a life from birth to death. I wanted to try to hit the high notes. It's, it's country music as a concept more than it is country music and sound. Um, and I'm not, uh, I don't be kicking out 180 songs during a pandemic like your man Ben over there. I'm a, I'm a slow dude. I move slow, so it was, it was a task, but I, I'm, I'm quite proud of it. Um, but I had what I kind of consider this love trilogy, right? Uh, in the end, it's real love, right? In the middle, a song that I had to cut for time was a heartbreak song. We felt like we had enough of those on the first record. And the first song is uh, What You Think Is Love. Uh, turns out to be really lust, like when you get with a partner who uh, is a teacher. It seems like in all ages, you know, I'm, just, I'm just picking my words here. I don't usually play under chandeliers, folks. I don't know how I got in here, but this song's called Never Better. I'm talking about my wife. I don't know who y'all talking about. <laughs> Never better than right now The first thing I saw this morning Anyhow was the movement of the king As you slowly let another breath out I can't say it like I mean The table's upside down the shower's in the sink, and try as I may, I can't find a way to find out what you're thinking. There's hope in the room, just barely out of view, till hope is cause it makes its final move. I can barely breathe the air, I just can't see outside of you. It's over long before I learn. Tell me I can go and have it all Tell me if you let go I'd do anything but fall That the only thing between us Is the hand that left the writing on the wall There's hope in the room Just barely out of view Till hope is cause it makes us find a move Outside of you, it's over long before I learn to lose. All right, this is crowd participation. I want y'all to close your eyes, everyone. And just imagine the lead guitar played like it's never been played before. See, I flew up the mountain just to fall down inside. And I'd lie if I told you I would change the same thing if I tried. You're the end of my day. You can bury me here with the sun on my face. And you can leave what's left of my heart right See outside of you, it's all alone. Or if you got a bad imagination, lead guitars on the record. <laughs> For the Bentley fun.
We'll settle for fly J truck stop showers. That really sounds better. Shit's exploding. <laughs> A couple years ago, I was um, farming songs for a new record. I didn't have any love songs before I met the love of my life. Um, and um, I, I moved to Vermont for a summer because my grandmother was 93. And she was living by herself up there. And so I was taking a break from Nashville. I, I had um, moved from Texas to Nashville to write songs. And when I got there in 2011, I don't know if you heard the radio then, but it wasn't a lot of... Sad yeah, slow songs. There's a lot of songs about trucks and Daisy Dukes and partying by the river and that kind of stuff. And it's since gotten worse. But um, <clears throat> I was taking these publisher meetings and coming in with my sad songs and quickly being told that I was too sad and too slow for country music, which I thought was the point. So I took a break and I went to Vermont. And um, the day I got to my grandmother's house, uh, 14-yard truck of topsoil got delivered for me to resaw on her lawn. And so I was out there shoveling and thinking about love songs, and there was this old bar regular who, uh, I, when, I, when I was living in Nashville, I was working at a bar, and um, this guy would come in, his name was Fred, and he would sit at the end of the bar and kind of heckle whoever was on stage. And uh, sometimes it was me. Um, a lot of times it was a kid from Belmont who was playing his first gig or whatever. And, um, one time I walked by him after I got done, he said, well, Ben, at least you tried. That was gonna be tough. And um, I, could never, I could never break him, you know, uh, never get him to like what I was doing. But he fell in love with this blues singer named Jonel Mosser, who I uh, played there quite a bit. And um, I was trying to come up with, with songs, and I, I was thinking about the way that he looked at her, and it was the, one of the more, more pure ways of seeing uh, a man look at a woman. And, uh, and he would always give all the girls a $20 bill because it was like five or six of them working and I was the dude who worked, so I never got one. Um, then I came back after I wrote this song and he gave me a $20 bill every time I showed up. He has a, he had a song about him. But, uh, I'm gonna do this for him. This is a, a love story about my friend Fred. Back of the barroom, just watching the bank. It had just about all of the first day that he could stand. And she was there. Skin for white, white. The last server will. He said, It's nice to meet you. And she said, My name's Jonah. If the bandit quit. They were clear in the stage And for the first time that evening He had nothing to say He's just a drunk fortune teller Knows there's nobody else. Yeah, Fred was in trouble. The night that he met Jonah, it's a one and a million, untouchable feeling that nobody. Else. Explain the rest of your lifetime 
You'd be lucky if you find someone time can't erase if you need a reminder. Or a love story to tell. Just watching the eyes get brighter. When Fred looks at your When the whole place is empty. Chairs are up and the lights are down. Whoever they got bartending, let's Fred smoke inside now. Yeah, you can make up your own rules. As long as you're tipping well And for the next three more hours He tells us all about Jonah It's a one and a million A touch up of feeling Nobody else can explain For the rest of your lifetime You'd be lucky if you find Someone time can't erase If you need a reminder Or a love story just watching the eyes get bright When Fred looks at Jonah Just watching the eyes get bright When Fred looks at Jonah Jason Eady on the Harmonies. Well, I saw Jesus in the corner. He was talking to my friend. They both put my way. Guess I should remember all the trouble that I've been on. It's to his promises, pieces on the ground. Well, I was drunk, tired, and busted. The day he took me in, he offered me protection from myself. Yes, I should have told him that I'm no kind of friend. Well, I guess he found out the day I left. I took the money from the wallet on the table by the door. The pistol that he told me he kept locked inside the drawer. Took off before the sun came up. I didn't see him anymore. Well, I was killing time in Reno where the snow fell on the ground. And I was counting out what a little I had left. I asked the bartender. Who would 
ten down on the table Save one for myself I walk across the street in daylight With that pistol in my jeans I walked up and told the teller I don't want to cause a scene Just put the money in the suitcase We can do this nice and clean Almost to the front door when I heard that siren scream. And they were just around the corner, coming fast. Turned back to that teller, and he was looking right at me. Well, I just watched him fall as I let that pistol blast. Pistol in that river. Jump train, leave town. In a hotel out by Carson Lake, I was trying to lay low when I heard some locals talking. Oh. It seems they'd caught the man who robbed down Wells Fargo up in Reno. You don't mess around with the law. Yesterday they hanged a man I couldn't run anymore I saw Jesus in the corner He was talking to my friend They both looked my way and turned around Yes, I should remember all the trouble that I've been. It's just promises and pieces on the ground. It's just promises and pieces on the ground. Actually, uh, I have a post story for that one. Uh, it's kind of the story that keeps on giving. Um, I had written that song, and, uh, and I spent way more time on that song than I normally do writing songs. Um, normally, I give it, you know, there's like, you know, like a couple hours or maybe even a day you give it. And if it doesn't work, you just, it just goes away. You know? But I worked on that one for a few weeks. and. Uh, I was really, I took a lot of pride in getting all the plot points right and making sure everything lined up and all the, the people and, the, and everything just, you know, fit. Really took a lot of pride in it. The first time I played that show was up in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. This guy came up after the show and he said, I, after the whole 90 minute set that I had played, of everything I did, he chose to tell me, he said, you know, uh, metal weighs more than water. And if you throw a pistol in the water, it's not gonna wash up on the shore. Was his contribution to my to my set. Did you, did you keep your eye on that guy? <laughs> was he me? It wasn't you. <laughs> and I said, uh, I'm glad to say this, I thought it. I said, uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought it right at him. I said, uh, 
You keep your physics out of my country music, sir. <laughs> There's no room for physics in country music. <laughs> but the uh, story keeps going. So then, so then I, I went up and played up in Reno a few months after that, and I played that song, and then I told that story, and then, that, and, and then this lady came up after that show, and she goes, no, that's not true. She said, the uh, Truckee River runs right out of the Sierra Nevadas, right here through Reno, and, it, and it's on its way down, and it runs so fast that it would, she had a scientific term for it, but it would take the uh, pistol and it would wash it up on the shore. And uh, I, I thought, I knew that the whole time. That's why I'm, it's part of the process, you know, right? Yeah. So then I went back to Cleveland and uh, a couple years later, and I just couldn't wait to tell the story, and I, I told that story, and after the show, that first guy, uh, he was there in the crowd, and uh, he didn't like that story nearly as much. <laughs> and then I played in Cleveland a lot of times since, and I've never seen him again. He's never, he's never been there. <laughs> he, he, I think he liked facts until they were, uh, until there were other facts. <laughs> yeah, nobody tell old Crow Medicine Show where the Cumberland Gap is either. <laughs> I was writing that record I told y'all about. I thought I was done with it, and I realized I had a pretty big gap uh, in, in kind of a life, uh, in a timeline, and that gap was kind of about where my parents were, are right now, so I've told longer versions of this. We don't have a lot of time. It'd be a school night. I'll tell a quick version of it. I was, I was born in Northwest Louisiana, grew up in a small town called Blanchard. Uh, lived in a trailer at the end of a dead end road. Didn't really know dad. I mean, he lived with us, uh, but he was working 80 hours a week. He was busting his ass. There's three kids. I don't think they planned on any of us. And uh, dad got a job at the Toyota plant in Georgetown, Kentucky. And that's why I'm a proud Kentuckian that just THs kind of sound like D's sometimes. And I really like spicy food. But anyway, uh, you know, dad's income doubled, which, you know, put us firmly lower middle class, right? And, they built a modest house and, um, you know, quite proud of it, but, you know, it is what it is. And uh, my mama, both of them grew up poor too. Mama, instant bougie. She's like, we built a house, we can have a swimming pool. And dad's like, you just need to calm down. <laughs> Ask me next year, a year goes by, uh, Jim, we, you know, all right, let's get to work on that swimming pool. He's like, uh, about I'll take you out to Taco Bell on a Friday night. <laughs> you can order anything you want. Off the dog. <laughs> so that kind of quieten, you know, that, that argument gets quiet over the years and the years go by and the kids move out and their grandparents now both retired. Um, you know the drill. But y'all, a few, three, four years ago, my mama got her swimming pool. When I was thinking about that gap in my storytelling, I was thinking about uh, what what kind of love can uh, keep two people together that long. Sometimes I tear up when I tell that. It's called Walls Fall Down. Our life said it was a surprise to see it turn out this way. There's lightning in your eyes, woman, there's a shotgun and a smile on your face. The blessings are all counted, the harvest is found to get us through. But if I see the other side, there will be no rest until I find you. When the walls fall down. When my last step hits the ground, let them all go and gather around. Let the walls fall down. I look back if I care to see the younger me there at the first. Some foolish manish boy with a barely managed ploy to beat the worst. 
Well, you are my friend, you got my heart in your hand and time to kill. You know, baby, I'd do it all again. You give me another chance, and I swear I'd stand beside you still when the walls fall down. When the last step hits the ground, let them all go and gather round. Let the walls fall down. I should have told y'all it's an above ground pool. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> Sunshine blinding my view, and I can barely see your head. There's a little more I've got left to lose. With your hand in mine, we'd laugh the joke of time right in its face. Lord, for a minute there, it felt like we lived forever in this place. When the walls fall down, when the last step hits the ground, let them all go and gather round. Let the walls fall down, and I stand beside you still. Woman, I swear I'd stand beside you. But when the walls fall down, when the last step hits the ground, let them all go and gather round. Let the walls fall down. Cause when the walls fall down, when the last step hits the ground, let them all go and gather round. Let the walls fall down and give me one last look around. Let the walls fall down. Hey, real quick, uh, happy birthday, Jolene. We love you. Thanks to you and Perry and, and all of y'all for coming out and spending a Tuesday night listening uh, to my bullshit and Jason and Ben's professionalism. I come by this business pretty naturally. My, uh, my father was a songwriter, and uh, I got to watch a man try to feed his family off of uh, that kind of living, which was a, an interesting thing at times, but uh, I learned a lot from, uh, from watching his career. And uh, one, of the, one of the biggest things I, I got to learn from it was, you know, he didn't have a gold record or a song on Kenny Chesney's album or anything awesome like that. I don't know if that would be awesome or not, but um, he didn't have it. And, uh, but it could buy you a Bentley. It could buy you a Bentley, probably. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, up until the last week of his life, he was still writing songs, and I thought that was it brought a lot of purity to um, his craft and why he did it. And uh, I definitely wouldn't be driving around the country sleeping in Walmart parking lots the back of my van uh, to play in really nice rooms like this or not so nice rooms sometimes too I can't get this thing in tune um, if it wasn't for him so I, uh, I'm gonna honor him by doing this song Father's blood 
running through my veins, flowing from my fingertips to these guitar strings that be just another melody without a song to sing. Wouldn't even know who I was without my father's blood. Well, I pray to God and I love a lot. Keep these busted shoes here on the ground. I get lost and I wander off, but I always end up coming back around. It's all because I got my father's blood. This callous tan. Ain't afraid to hurt. I was younger than most folks I know. They got put to work. They got some scars to remind me what I'm worth. But even now and then, when they get cut, I see my father's blood. Well, I pray to God and I love a lot. Keep these busted shoes here on the ground. And I get lost and I wander off. But I always end up coming back around. And it's all. I got my father's blood yeah, It's all because I got my father's blood Kentucky Deluxe way up there at the top. <laughs> Absolute legends back there. Look at these athletes, man. Climbing, <laughs> climbing three stories just to feed Jason Eddie booze. That's right. That's right. Gazelles. It was in the rider. <laughs> uh, all right. I want to do this one. This is uh, a song that I wish I could tell you I wrote. And, uh, if I was smart, I'd just not say anything at all and just play it and let y'all think I wrote it. But uh, but I didn't. I didn't write this. This is a Channing Wilson song, and uh, I first heard this. I had played a show in Nashville with Adam Hood, and uh, we played a show at the Basement Bar, and and we got done. We played the the midnight till um, two a.m. slot, and we got done. And he, he goes, "Hey, there's this uh, songwriter house across the street." that there's just a bunch of writers hanging out playing songs, you want to go? Which is a dumb question for him to ask, because of course I did. And uh, so we went over there and walked in, and the first thing I heard was Channing playing this song, and I'd never met Channing before, but I just knew, I thought, well, shit, that's a great song, and I really wish I had written it. And uh, I meant to write it. That was the biggest lesson I took away from it. I meant to write this song for a long time. And then I walked in and had to hear somebody else sing it. So, uh, honestly, what I did was I went home after that and I tried to write my version of it. 
And I realized he had done it the best way it could be done. And so I just called him up and said, hey, can I record your song? And he said yes. So this is one of the best songs I've ever heard. Um, and uh, I'm really proud to be a part of it. The reason I wanted to write it was there was this old blues man in Mississippi that taught me how to play guitar. And I started going to see him when I was about 14 years old. My dad told me to go take lessons from this guy. He worked with him. And he was an old blues player in Mississippi. And I didn't want to play blues. I wanted to play country music. So I fought my dad on it. And of course, he was right. And uh, so I got over to this guy's house and we sat on his porch. And he goes, well, play me what you got. So I played him everything I knew, everything I had learned out of my Roy Clark Big Note guitar book. I was waiting for his impressed reaction. And uh, instead of being impressed, he just leaned over on his porch. He leaned over, put his hands up, put his elbows on his, on his knees and grabbed the pick out of my hand. And he took it out of my hand, he threw it in the yard. And he goes, son, you don't need that. You got five of these. And uh, I've never picked up a pick to this day in my whole life since then. And uh, it's all because of him. And so I went over there for years and years. I went over to his house all the time. I'd go over and he'd give me guitar lessons. And then even more than the guitar lessons, we would hang around and he would just, we'd just talk. We'd talk on his porch for hours and hours and hours. And I did that all through my teenage years. And then I left home and I didn't see him for a long time. For about 30 years I didn't see him. And then last week, a couple weeks ago, I went back home to Mississippi and I got to go see him. I got to hang out on that same porch that we used to hang out on. And uh, I showed up, I didn't know how it was gonna go. And as soon as I got there, he said, I mean, I hadn't seen this guy in 30 years. As soon as I get there, he goes, let me get my guitars. He goes and grabs them. He's, 90, he's 92 years old now. And he comes out carrying this huge PV amp and two guitars. And we sit down and we start playing. And it's like not a moment has passed. He said, uh, first thing out of his mouth was, want to learn some blues? And he starts teaching me blues licks. And I learned, I learned from him. I learned some licks that day that I, I'm gonna use. Anyway, I'm really glad to be a part of this song and, uh, and uh, I think about Mr. J.C. Cannon every time I play this one. Well, I was 18 working on a road crew in Georgia. He was a Vietnam vet. Tennessee. He held the post while I drove the hammer. Rain and shine side by side, five days a week. And he taught me the blues. And I'd sing for him, old Hank Williams, too. And he'd say, boy, the only difference between us is your white and my black Jesus. Well, hey, it was barely legal. And I wasted my own cigarettes. But his went to his woman and his children. Rest, he bet on anything and moves. And he taught me the blues. And I'd sing for him, old Hank Williams, too. And he'd say, boy, the only difference between us is your wife. I 
woke last night to the sound of thunder And my mind drifted back to that old man Oh, and I ain't seen it since I left Georgia Yeah, but something tells me it'll meet again And he Boy, the only difference between us is your white and my black Jesus. And when we meet again, there'll be nothing between us. It'll just be him and me and Jesus. fun being with a couple of Texas songwriters because uh, they're just uh, eat up with pride and for the most part Mike rightfully so uh, it's a story tradition in Texas I know getting down there being just blown away with the respect uh, it's pretty much exactly the respect we're getting out of uh, Omaha Nebraska tonight so thank you from the bottom of this boy's heart Texas got a good thing going. Uh, they got a lot of infrastructure for this sort of thing. I'm pretty damn proud of what we're doing in the Commonwealth of Kentucky with what little we got. We're doing pretty damn good. Here a few years ago, I was out doing a run of shows with this, uh, with this Texas fella and having a damn good time. And uh, there was this one night that things got a little out of hand. The aforementioned Adam Hood was in the house and he was drinking at the time and I was drinking too. And we did that. Apparently it was tequila, because the next day I reeked of tequila, and I'm not a tequila drinker, but so it was. And this Texas songwriter that I'd been uh, running around with said, man, you want to write a song? I, I started this song, and I got a lot of respect for this dude, and I said, man, just to, just to have my name on it, I'll be stoked. That song is called Pretty When I Die. That songwriter's name is Jason Eady. It's amazing what you can do with a hand. I got the kind of luck I can't change I've been lost up out in the rain I drink every drop and live to see another day I got the kind of luck I can't change Feel the hurt till it's gone. I'll try to make it work out if it's wrong. I'll sing every word of this old Edie song. I won't feel the hurt till it's gone. I won't have it all the good and the bad. The old every fall is just another time. This life is the worst and the best I ever had.
thanks for letting me hop on that song, Jason. Yeah, yeah, man. You go all right thanks for a Texas <laughs> dude. <laughs> well, I hope y'all had a good time. Thanks for coming out Tuesday night. Omaha. <laughs> We're going to do one more song for you. We're going to close it out on this one. And uh, we're going to do a little cover song. We're going to do a Towns Van Zandt song for you. One more time, y'all. Ben Dan Hurd. Justin Wills. Jason Eady. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much.